Annette, welcome to the program. This is going to be fun. I'm so excited to be here, Gina. Thank you so much for having me. All right, let's start with your start, okay? So like, take me back to how did you first become an entrepreneur? Yeah, so before I got into coaching, before I got into this world of even some course creation and yeah. being an entrepreneur, I had a very probably similar path than a lot of listeners where I did have a little bit of a start in the corporate world. I actually went to school for hospitality management out of all things. And okay. so straight out of college, started working a corporate job, started working at a hotel. And right away, like within the first few months, I was like, I really value freedom. And this ah. is not really the type <laughs> of freedom that I'm looking for. I'm working holidays. I'm working odd days. I'm working odd hours. It was just like, I knew in my heart that I wanted to make an impact. And also that I wanted to just do something that I genuinely enjoyed on a day-to-day -day basis. That was really, really important for me. And so right around that time, I actually had a friend of mine who she, both of us were like really into fitness and she encouraged me to get certified as a fitness instructor, personal trainer. And so I went that route and through her guidance, I also started helping her. She was an entrepreneur and started working with her to basically train corporate individuals after hours on how to start running and training for a marathon. And so that's where I got my start at oh, entrepreneurship really? was okay. literally helping people get in the best shape of their lives after work and basically teaching them how to train for a marathon. And so right away I was like, okay, I'm getting paid to do something I love. This is so fun. This doesn't even feel like work. So that was really kind of the start for me where I knew it was possible. And from there, I just really kept following the nudges of the things that I was passionate about that I knew I could help others with. Okay, wait, time out. Did, where, were you, you weren't certified in, in teaching people how to run marathons, right? Like you, and were you running marathons yourself? Like how, where did this come from? Yeah. Stories like this. Yeah. Totally random. Right. So I actually got certified as a personal trainer. So right. it was really into fitness, never actually got training on how to start running marathons, but I started running my own it was actually half marathons, not full marathons, but started Still. running my own half marathons. Yeah. And, and it was a very like niche space where my friend realized she had a lot of experience in business. And she's like, I'm not going to just train corporate individuals you know, just random personal training. She's like, I'm really going to go after those people who want to start running. And so we really started like very niche down into the, the people who had an interest in yes, getting in shape, but also just learning to run and to have a goal at the end of, you know, the season to really look forward to, which I really think is still important as a coach and as a course creator, like we're always thinking about tangible results that we can help our students get. And as entrepreneurs, we're doing that every single day, but I didn't know consciously that that's what we were doing back then. But looking back, I realized how tangible and specific that result was and how appealing it was to the people we got to train. Well, what I love about this is that for my course creators listening right now, you knew you just wanted to train, you were a fitness trainer, you got a certification in that, you were open in terms of what service you were providing for people. And you're like, okay, let's start with marathon training. And then yeah. you built it from there. Okay. And then keep going. Cause I know there's more, to totally. this, right? Keep going. So from there, that was my little taste of, okay, this is what it feels like to do something I'm passionate about. And so let me, at the time I was working with my friend, it was her business. And so I really started broadening from there and thinking like, how can I do this for myself in my own way? Because long-term, I don't see myself running half marathons my whole life, but I am really into fitness. And I realized what I was really passionate about was helping men and women at the time, but it, it evolved into just helping women really find confidence and the sense of like knowing that they could do anything that they wanted to. And for me at the time that came through getting in the best shape of our lives. But since then it's evolved to, you know, I did get my online business start as a fitness coach for many years, grew my business as a fitness coach, but eventually I pivoted. And I kept noticing the same things. It's like, I'm still helping women with their confidence, but now as a life coach and, you know, from life coaching, I noticed that a lot of my clients wanted to start a business. And so the natural next step was 
to become a business coach. And so I really let my entrepreneurship path kind of lead me. I don't think I could have envisioned every single thing that has happened if I hadn't just been present, followed the things that I loved, kept helping people and just really being present to the next step, like noticing what was next and naturally really kind of allowing business to evolve and to just be this like piece of self-expression service and just ultimate like freedom as well for, you know, myself and the people I get to work with. Okay. I love this idea of being present, uh, to the next step. So, uh, how did you were present and that's how you knew you were ready to pivot. Right. And, but that sometimes the fears creep in and that, you know, that right. Where it's like, oh, who am I? I can train people to run half marathons and marathons. Where did you come up with that confidence to say like, I could be a, a life coach, a business coach, and I could show them other things. Like, where does that come from? Yeah, thank you for asking that because I just want to point out that I've had imposter syndrome at every single pivot <laughs> and every single new level. There has been resistance. There has been a ton of imposter syndrome. Like, who am I to call myself a life coach? Who am I to get certified as a life coach? Who am I to start, you know, coaching people on how to start a business? And now that I'm a co-founder of a tech company, there's also been a ton of imposter syndrome over like, who am I to be a tech co-founder? So at every single level, we're going to have imposter syndrome and we're going to have blocks that come up because naturally as humans, we want to stay safe. We want to stay comfortable, right? Our brains aren't really like here just to keep us like they're, they're here to keep us safe. Right. And so at the end of the day, all the fears are going to come up. So I think knowing that is, is key, but also when I say being present is like, instead of projecting all of our fears into what could happen in the future, really working with what's present. So if it's imposter syndrome, working with coaches, working with people who have done it before and, and borrowing sometimes the confidence of others like yourself, Gina, who have done it before, who are like, okay, it's possible because I see a vision. They believe in me. They know I could do this. So I think a lot of it had to do with me gaining confidence through having my own coaches and through, you know, taking courses, like yeah. being a student and also just taking messy action. Like you're yes. not going to get rid of the, you're not going to get rid of the fears by just sitting at home. I promise you, you've got to get into motion. <laughs> yeah. I love that. We talk about taking imperfect action all the time and just moving and getting the momentum and finishing our courses, right? And finishing our programs and really bu building our businesses. So I love that. Uh, one of the questions I, I wanted you on, Annette, because like, I just love, first of all, I love your brand and I love what you're building. And I feel like your coaching is really spot on when it comes to building businesses that last for the long term. So you've already kind of answered what holds us back sometimes, but what else do you think it is when we don't get our courses done or we don't get that business built that we've always dreamed of? What's holding us back? Oh, thank you for bringing this up. I really feel like at the core of it is that we haven't built the new identity mm, of okay. who we're going to become when we're okay. course creators. It, a lot of it has to do with identity. And so what shows up, like the things that you might recognize is you start overthinking, you start feeling really overwhelmed and you start kind of some, for some people I know for me, I'm a perfectionist. So I will start nitpicking at the details that don't even matter. You know, you spend like, you're like, I was working all day, but I was like refining my logo or like things that just didn't matter. Right. And so it shows up a lot for my students and myself is overwhelm and overthinking. And like I said, imposter syndrome as well. And so uh, most of it is just because you haven't yet become the person who is a coach, a course creator. Yep. You just don't see yourself like that yet. And so you're not acting from a place of being that new version of yourself. And so that's really what holds us back. So much of it is mindset. As you know, Gina, oh, you yeah. can teach somebody the strategy, you can teach them the steps, yeah. but what holds us back is like our inner, our inner work, our inner thoughts are, those are the blocks that are really in the way. And so I, I really believe in building the new identity by doing the things like, yes, being the person but taking the action as if you're already that person. Yeah. So if you're a coach, yeah. what action would you take right now? Yes. How would you show 
show up on social media. Mm-hmm. I remember I want to share this story that I remember I really wanted to be a speaker. And it was a big goal for me in my entrepreneurship journey. And like, I want to be on stage. I want to be asked to speak on stage. And one day I had this breakthrough of being like, if I want to be a speaker, I can create my own stage and claim yes. that I'm a speaker. Yes. And so I hosted my own event in 2018. And you know, I built the stage. I invited people. I think I had like 60 people show up, which was a big deal for me because I had all the fears of like, what if nobody signs up? Shows up right. My first sign up was one of my closest friends. But anyway, it was just that embodiment of like, oh, I'm a speaker. I'm a speaker because I'm speaking on stage and I did it. And that same year I got asked to speak at five other conferences. And so it was just like an example of how when we really claim our new identity and who we are at this new level, we're going to get the opportunities from that place. Uh, I love this. this. Yeah. So (laughs) you gave yourself permission, right? So, Mm -hmm. so often it's like, we're waiting around for somebody like, okay, is somebody going to tell me I'm a course creator now? Right. It's somebody going to tell me I'm a coach. It's like, you have our permission, right? Like, yes, you have it. And you were able to do that for yourself. And you're saying, I'm, I'm going to own it. And I love that you built your own stage because that's what we have to do, right? We have to build our own platforms, whether we're a coach or a course creator or whatever that looks like. Don't wait for permission and then build it and build it yourself. Yes. Exactly. So even as you're listening, like think about where you're waiting for permission and how you can just give yourself the permission right now to say, I am a coach. I might not be working with clients yet, but I am a coach. And find evidence in your life where you're already giving advice as a coach, where you're already being that in that energy of, you know, service to others and just and claim it. And I know it feels uncomfortable, but it's going to get more comfortable as you keep validating your ideas and you keep on taking action from this messy place. Like you're going to feel more embodied. I promise the scaries come the most in the beginning before like the identity is like fully, fully sunken in. Yes, I 100% agree. Like you are an expert. I talk about it all the time. All you need is that result. It could be yourself, right? You get that one little result of transformation uh, and then that desire and that audience that you want to serve, right? So you could be the coach. You could be the course creator. I, I, I love it. We, we're we speaking the truths that we speak all the time on this podcast. Uh, you brought up coaching, Annette. Like I know this is your jam, right? And why do you think coaching, because we talked before this podcast, we're like, you know, coaching is a great gateway for some course creators, especially when you're starting out and you're trying to figure out what am I teaching, right? What am I presenting here? Why do you think it's such a great gateway to course creation? I love that question because what I see is, and kind of going back to the identity identity piece, sometimes people are like, well, I'm not a coach. Well, I don't have a certification. You're looking at yeah. how you're not a coach versus how you are already a coach. Yes. And so it's really about when we're course creators and we're wanting to get a start, I think coaching is a really, really great place to start because you don't need, there's no governing board first and foremost around coaching, which I don't want to use that as, a negative, but more so as a positive, like meaning you don't have to go through years of schooling or certifications to become a coach. Do I recommend being an experienced coach and getting certifications? Definitely, but you don't have to, to get started. And so I think it's a really great start because you can really coach on anything that you already feel you have expertise on. And I'm sure you dive into this so much as a course creator. It's like, teach what you know, teach, be embodied and teach the things that you have implemented in your own life, right? If you're going to be a life coach and you're going to niche down even more, maybe into like mindset coaching or anything more specific, it's like, look at how you've already utilized those tools that you're teaching in your own life so that you can feel like an expert and you truly can get started anytime. You just have to claim it. Yeah. I, oh, I love that. What What do you say to people? Cause I say some things that I, I bet we're aligned. We say, I, Annette, I don't know which way to go. Like I've p- talked to people like I'm a travel agent, but I have a passion for helping empty, empty nesters. Right. So like everyone's got a, a lot of ideas. I'm sure you talk to people sure. all the time. Right. Or, or I talk to my accelerator students like, uh, but this other idea came up. I'm like, okay, wait, 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 wait. So okay. what do you, what do you say to coaches who have a lot of different ideas? Like where to start? 
Yes. And that's beautiful because most of the time, if we're course creators, coaches, like a lot of us are multi-passionate. So there's so many different avenues we can take. I always like to recommend going with the P the area where you feel most embodied okay. and also the area where you genuinely have, there's a need for clients in this area. So like if you know that you're a travel agent, right. And you have all this experience and you love planning travel, like you could easily do that as a coach, right. Or as a course creator. So it's really about looking at where you feel embodied. So where you're a few steps ahead of others and recognizing a need in the market so that you can help fill that gap through your services. Yes. You and I are aligned on that. So I talk about having the demand. I love this, this sense though, of feeling embodied. So it's like bringing the spiritual bent. So I'm such a pragmatist. If you guys have been listening to this damn podcast, you know, like it's just practical, 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 but I love bringing on this kind of spiritual bend to, yeah. to compliment. So this idea of feeling embodied and, and let's, let's talk about, it's not even the spiritual, like I love your Instagram. And today you talked about being, getting recentered. Right. Yeah. And, and, and finding, uh, your ground again. So how do you, how do you do that as mm. a business owner in the day to day? Yeah, I shared it's, it's been very interesting. So to be vulnerable, I've been going through my own phase right now where I'm working a lot on the back end of my business right now and just getting things very steady and stable, which sometimes you just need to do. And I notice that when I'm in the background, I, it's hard for me to show up online. It's like, I'm working from this like masculine place all day. And then for me to think about, Oh, I need to create some content or I need to get creative. <laughs> I'm like, there's no creative creativity rolling through right now. And I'm just learning to be okay with that. Cause there's seasons in business. Yeah. Um, but I do know that when I wake up feeling a little, you know, crunchy as I yes. like to call it, <laughs> we do. all know, yeah. right. We all oh, do. Oh Yeah. Like first and foremost, it's being like accepting and compassionate with yourself to be like, it's not the end of the world. I'm not going to make myself wrong for this feeling, right? That's where the coach comes in, where I'm like, I get to coach myself through this and learn that, hey, we're going to have ebbs and flows. But I also believe in taking action and not keeping ourselves stuck just because we feel a certain way. It's like you have choices, you have actions that can literally move energy in your body. And so for me, getting recentered, getting realigned when I'm not really feeling motivated to post or to show up online or to show up on podcasts, I really like to move my body. I really feel like if we're feeling stuck inside, it's because there's no movement going on. So that could be through breath work or like physical movement. For me, I just know a workout and some sweat, I'm going to feel better. Right. And so yeah. there's that. And there's also connecting with people because I feel like the moment, I mean, after this podcast, Gina, I know I'm going to be on like level 100 because yeah, it's, too. this is part of what fuels me. Yes. And so know the things that fuel you so that when you feel those downs or those unmotivated period periods, or you're not feeling creative as a course creator or as a business owner, you can bring inspiration back into your business by doing those things that have nothing to do with business at all, but that just help you elevate your energetic state. And that that's the energy that you then bring into your business, into your customers, into, you know, your day-to-day -day experience. So I really feel like it's like, we get to activate ourselves through the things that make us feel really good. Yeah. So that's what I would say. Oh gosh. I love that. And this idea of bringing inspiration back because I don't, a lot of times I'm like, I don't want to do that darn real. Right. Like I, like <laughs> the social media team's like, where's the real Gina, where's this. And, and then, right. Like if you're not in the mood, it's like, but I should be moving my body. Like I've just got back into running again and, and I feel so good after, and no one ever said like, I regret that run. Right. Or I regret moving yeah. my body. Uh, and, and I just, it's, I got to remember that, you know, that once, once I start moving, I feel so good. For sure. And as business owners, it's like, it's our responsibility to do that for ourselves. Like yes. nobody's going to do it for us. For us. Right? No one's going to do it. And so we get to like literally take the actions daily that we know are filling our cup first so that we can pour into others and into the business from this full cup. And I really, really believe that. And I know that when I'm not feeling my best, I'm just not pouring into myself. 
yeah. I'm giving, yeah. but I'm not pouring back in. Right. And so I'm pouring from this empty cup. And so I think it's so important to be aware of the things that bring you the most creativity, alignment, bliss, excitement in your business so that you can just be the best business owner you can be. Yes. Okay. I love that. Love, love, love it. Uh, before I let you go, I want to bring your journey kind of full circle here. And you mentioned being a like a tech CEO, right? So, okay. How'd you end up here? You gotta, you gotta wrap this up and let us know where you are. Yeah, today. for yeah. sure. So I'm a tech co-founder for a company called Cohere, which is an all-in-one coaching platform for coaches, service providers who sell, schedule, and deliver services online. And so I, as I mentioned a little bit in the beginning of this episode, I started at myself as a coach and I still do some business coaching. But it came full circle when my partner and I, who's the CEO of Cohere, we decided to partner and bring to the world something that we realized was missing for course creators, but also coaches mm -hmm. who are getting started or who are in the earlier mid stages of their business. What we hear, what I experience in my business is I get overwhelmed figuring out the tech. It's like, I know what I want to teach. I know that I love what I do but I don't really want to handle all these like super complex systems. What I hear from coaches, I just heard this yesterday. like, I don't want to have to have a tech degree to learn how to host my course somewhere. And I don't oh, want to hear it hire. all the time, right? right? Like, oh, I got it right up to the tech and I gave up, right? Like nothing crushes my soul. And imagine, how many, yeah, imagine yeah. how many courses aren't birthed into life because of the tech and systems piece. And so I experienced that in my business. My husband watched my journey and he's like, you know, you're all the time, you're like complaining about all these systems that you're figuring out. And he's like, there must be something easier. And so we partnered in 20, oh my gosh, I forgot the years now, 2018. Oh, wow. The vision of Cohere yeah. came to life. It came yeah. to market more so in the beginning of 2020 and perfect timing, obviously with the pandemic yes. and everything. And so we're helping coaches start their business. We're hope, helping early stage coaches and service providers scale their business. And we're really doing that by helping you take care of all the busy work through online tech and making it really simple so that you can stay in your zone of genius and focus more on the work that you love, the service, the coaching, being the course creator, creating the content, all the things that do fill you up so that all the other stuff's taken care of for you. Okay. I love it. And we'll link to it in the show notes. And then, and that, is that the best, where should we learn more about your content though? Should we list your Instagram? Like where's best Absolutely. to learn more about you? Yeah. So there's yeah. two places. Okay. Number one, my own personal Instagram account is Annette, A-N-E-T-T-E, -T -T -E, Sky with an E at the end. So S-K-Y-E middle name, and then last name, Oran, O-R-A-N. I'm sure it'll be linked below. And then also our, our business Instagram page is where we're sharing a lot of content for coaches and, and course creators and all the things. And so that is cohere.live on Instagram. Those are the two best places. And then I will give you a link, Gina, so we can link that below. And for anybody who wants to Perfect. streamline their systems and keep that side of their business really simple. Okay. Love that. We'll absolutely link to all of that in the show notes. And at Thank you for coming. I love your energy. You need to come back. And I mean, I think we should just talk about maybe self-care and like us as entrepreneurs, maybe next time or I, let's I, do it, Gina. Yeah, let's I am like, so like, in. And yeah. by the time we reconnect, I'm sure Gina and I will be like killing the reels and we'll be in this really <laughs> fun place. So we'll give you all an update on that as well. <laughs> yeah, we'll let you know our progress and how it's going. Okay. Thanks for making the time and coming on. For sure. Thank you so much, Gina, and have a great day, everyone. Bye.